The next short series of videos will deal with a vital topic for investors, how to read a chart. With no more ado then, what kind of person are you? And I've put up a quote here, some people will recognize from Monty Python's Life of Brian. You don't need to follow anybody, you've all got to think for yourselves. You're all individuals, says Brian. Yes, we're all individuals, responds the crowd. You may remember the scene, and then one lone voice says, I'm not. In this presentation, I want you to think about what kind of investor you are. Are you the contrarian who's prepared to go against the crowd, or are you someone who is a chart follower who likes to identify where the crowd's going and join them, ideally as early as possible, in order to make money? And don't forget the whole point of this is to identify the right way to play your investing hand as quickly as possible to make some money. So, you're a retail investor. Let's get it down to something practical rather than Monty Python. You're a retail investor, three companies. You can invest in any of them, but which one are you going to choose? Let's assume, for example, they're all um, retailers. So they're all selling stuff, they're all shop brands. Which one are you gonna invest in? Now, two approaches are possible. One on the left is roll your sleeves up, get to grips with each of the firm's products, really understand them, the technicalities, the specifications, the popularity and so on. Evaluate the quality of management, look at how often management changes, look at the track record, look at management's ability to deliver, look at the experience of the people at the top, do all of that hard work. Analyze the financial statements, crunch the numbers, knock out the ratios, do the comparisons. Or you could take a slightly more top-down approach. You could look at where consumers are actually going shopping. If those were three shops, for example, you could look at footfall. More importantly, you could look at the behavior of the stock price and ask yourself the question, where do I think the stock price is going next? If I'm seeing a stock chart from one of those companies where I've got strong upward momentum, a bullish trend, the right chart signals, the right patterns, maybe I don't even need to visit these stores to decide which one I buy. I do it on the strength of what the charts are telling me more or less alone. Now, Clearly, there are people out there who will do a bit of both. And clearly, the two approaches, which are rather different, might lead you to the same conclusion. Great, but the point is they are two rather different approaches. And just to put some nuts and bolts on that, investing's two main schools. There are one or two others, but the two main schools are the fundamental analysts who like to do bottom up, approach to companies, take each company in turn, understand the numbers and the ratios, do the P's, do the dividend yields, crunch the free cash flow, all stuff I deal with in other videos, by the way. They basically look for opportunities, they look for bargains, they look for places where the market's got the price wrong, opportunities to pick up stock at a bargain, or they identify overvaluations where the market's run ahead of itself. So they're basically doing their own groundwork, coming up with a bottom-up analysis of which stocks to buy, often on a case-by-case -case basis, or where we're going in this video, technical analysis, also known as charting, says, waste of time. Waste of time. A pure chartist would say, what are you doing all this for? Markets are efficient. You can't get ahead of the market because stock prices already reflect everything there is to know right now about a company or stock, because the market's enormous. There's thousands and millions of people all trading. So what makes you think you can identify any sort of problem that will throw up a bargain or a stock that's overpriced? Waste of time, much better to look at patterns of behavior, all right, see if they repeat themselves, which they tend to, and then get in at the right time and get out at the right time. So in other words, focus on the chart, don't spend too much time faffing about on the left. That's your charting or technical analysis approach. So you could end up in a nutshell with this situation. You've got the stock price tracking upwards nicely. And then the question is, what happens next? And this is the point of what I'm saying. It's all about, do I buy the stock here? Do I sell it? Do I do nothing? What do I do? That's the whole point of what I'm talking about in this video. What do I do next? And you'll get two different opinions potentially. A chartist would say, yes, buy. No one knows the future. There's clear momentum building behind the stock, and we'll take this on in more detail in future videos, by the way. So I'm gonna get in there. The volumes are building, there are bullish signals. I'm seeing a bullish pattern. Admittedly, not much of a pattern in a straight line, but I'm seeing a bullish pattern I'd buy. Whereas your fundamental analyst might say, actually, the PE ratio, that's one of the measures, looks a wee bit high to me, compared to sector, compared to average, compared to the past, and so on. So I'm gonna sell the stock, or I'm certainly not gonna buy any more. So you could actually get two different opinions of what to do next. 
or you might get the same opinion, but from two very different routes. Chartists believe one fundamental thing at the end of the day, or several fundamental things. Number one, the trend is your friend, so that is a pattern worth following. And number two, the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So in other words, fundamental analysts can be left on the outside, in the cold, saying, well, I don't think the stock is fairly valued. I think it's got a bit of a head of itself. And, you know, there can be years' worth of upward trending to go. And Chartists would say, you know, get on that bandwagon. Know when to get off it, but get on that bandwagon. All right, enjoy the ride. Go up with the rest of the crowd and you'll make money on the back of the stock. And trends can last quite some time. Now, if it's sounding a little bit fluffy, this is an introductory video, we can put a wee bit of science on it. Okay, the father of this whole technique, almost, is a chap called Charles Dow. Most people would agree with that. He is responsible for a number of things that we now live with today in stock markets. He's editor of the Wall Street Journal and uh, published some influential posts around about 1900 or so. He created the Dow Jones Industrial Index, quite an important one there, and he pioneered some important concepts. Now, this is just an introductory video, but if you're a chartist, if you're a technical analyst, these are important concepts. This is putting a bit of meat on some of the fluff that I've been talking about so far. It's the idea that you can identify, if you know what you're looking for, three types of trend in financial markets. Financial markets, I mean, you know, individual stock, an index, a sector, trends are possible. Primary trends, big ones, bull and bear phases lasting one to three years. Secondary trends, because markets don't move in a straight line, they tend to wobble. Or if you look at a stock chart, it zigzags, it doesn't just go up in a smooth line. Secondary trends, little corrections, little pullbacks, little reversals, little changes of direction but they leave the primary trend intact and then you get the noise, the stuff you want to ignore, the stuff that doesn't last very long. You get little ripples, little fluctuations, little reactions to day-to-day -day news and so on. Now, this is all pretty superficial stuff, but in future videos we can take it on in more detail. All right, so that begins to get us towards the sort of techniques we need because, you know, if you think you're at the start of a primary trend, a chart is to say, get in, get in and buy. All right, be ready for the secondary trends, dips, if you're in a bull market, little dips, and ignore the noise and know the difference between the three. And you can take that on, and we will do in other videos. Now, the three pillars of this technique, looking at charts, as I've mentioned, is share prices reflect everything that's known about a stock at a particular point in time. So don't worry about over undervaluations, -under technical, so fundamental analysis. Just identify the ride and get on it as quickly as you can. Investors act in herds, this is the point. Investors are prone to all move together, okay? All move in the same direction. So you need to identify when that's happening as early as you can, and what matters more than why. You're not gonna worry about basically why a stock price is going up or why it's going down. It's the fact it's going up and the strength of that trend we're interested in, not the nitty gritty fundamental analysis favored by a certain other school of investing. So what are we going to be doing in future videos? What can we do? The power of the chart. Well, we can do things like this. We can say, look, there is a kind of bullish stock chart. It's kind of moving up. It wiggles around a bit. We could put some tram lines on it, more in future videos, but to give you an idea, we could put some tram lines on it and say, actually, maybe looking at this, we want to know where it's going to go next. Obviously, that's the key. Do we buy, do we sell, what do we do? Maybe we can identify what are called support points here, here, and here, and sort of upper resistance points, kind of here, and here, and here. More about that coming up. So in other words, we can identify some sort of channel that might help us to explain what's going to happen next to the stock price. We can maybe look at the size of these dips, more about this coming up later, and worry about what that was. Was that just a little secondary reversal? And so on. And the whole point of this is to say, do we have some confidence to be able to say where the stock is headed next or where it's not headed next above or below those lines? Now, this sounds too good to be true. Is that it? Is that all I need to do to be an investor? Look at a couple of lines, identify support and resistance and predict where the stock's going to go next? Well, just going to finish with the critics. This all has quite a few critics. Number one, charting signals arrive too late for some people. The trend is your friend until it isn't. It's all very well looking at this and saying, I can use it to predict what's going to happen next, but what if that happens next or that? You know, what happens to the, uh, the tram lines or the Bollinger Bands I've identified then? 
Number two, interpretation is highly subjective. Primary trends, secondary trends, minor trends, it all sounds quite scientific, but it's much harder to apply in practice than it is to just write down on a piece of paper. If everyone uses it, it can't work. If these chart patterns are so obvious and so easy to spot and so easy to get ahead of, well, not everyone can get ahead of everyone else. Everyone can't make money in a market. Some win, some lose. So almost by definition, charting patterns have their critics who say, well, once you know about a charting pattern, it's almost defeated the point of having it in the first place. And simplicity is its appeal and its biggest weakness. Charts won't tell you certain things. A chart, like the one I just showed you, will not flag fraud. It won't flag false accounting. This is not bottom-up fundamental analysis. So many people would say, do a bit of charting, but do some fundamental analysis on the side as well. But in future videos, we'll take all of these points on and explore this technique in a bit more detail.